First thing we need to do is remove the factory battery cover by twisting the uh, flathead in the corner with a screwdriver. And then you got to remove the positive battery cover by pulling the two tabs on the side, lifting it off. You have the positive cable going to the factory fuse. We have to remove the side step well. There's a few Phillips head screws they have to pull out underneath the little clips. Remove the three Phillips head screws on the bottom side of the step well. Remove the screws on the side kick panel. Remove the lower B pillar cover screws. There'll be two on the front side. And any clip on the center that you have to pull off. On the other side of the partition, you're going to need to drill an access hole so you can feed your cable through to the back of the truck. We'll feed the positive cable through the wiring track into the factory battery compartment and run it down the side of the seat. Shove it through the hole that you made at the partition to the back. So what we're doing here is running the positive cable from the battery compartment through the track down the side of the step well and across to the back of the vehicle. Now we need to make our new battery cables for the final connections of the solenoid and battery. Figure out a length, cut the fit. See the description below for a link of how to make a battery cable Connect the wires to the solenoid and to the auxiliary battery. So now we're looking at the finished install. We have our positive cable from the factory battery going to the solenoid and then from the solenoid it's going to go to the auxiliary battery and then the positive cable goes from the auxiliary battery up to the positive stud on the inverter on the solenoid there's the ignition trigger wire we get from addition powered fuse from the front of the vehicle and then our ground the ignition trigger connects and disconnects the factory battery with the auxiliary battery. While the ignition is on, the positive cable coming from the front factory battery will be charging the rear auxiliary battery via the alternator. The ground is bolted to the frame with a good ground with the paint scraped away, so you have a good connection there. On the bottom of the inverter, there is a negative cable going to this negative side of the inverter. Positive cable attached to the positive stud on the inverter. Dip switches adjust the settings on the inverter as far as the charging rate and the, um, the depletion charge level. On the power button, there's the off position. Constant on, you flip it to power saver off. and you can also flip it to the power saver auto that is on auxiliary position. It will only runs when there is a load on it. So you can leave that on all weekend and your batteries won't die. It only pulls power from the battery once it senses a load on it. On the top side of the new Virgo, we have our GFCI outlets and we have our output and input plugs from the inverter. 
the AC out is going to our auxiliary outlets. We also have the input, which is for a short power plug if you wanted to have a short power plug to charge your auxiliary batteries. There's the auxiliary GFCI outlet. In the battery compartment, we have our fuse, 300 amp fuse going to the factory battery. From the fuse to the auxiliary battery and to the back of the truck. Put the factory cover back over to protect the positive terminals. We have to modify it a little bit to make sure it fit back on. And that's a completed inverter install. Thanks for watching and check back for more content in the future.